Welcome back to another video. So this video is a continuation from the last lesson. I told you guys I'll split it up into two. So, you know, we split it up into the weekly candle. And now we're going to kind of dissect the daily candle, right? This episode might be a bit longer. Even though I told you guys I'm going to try and keep the episode short, episode short. There's quite a few concepts to, you know, explore and talk about. But, yeah, strap in. But let's get into it. This, okay. So with our daily candle, right? Let's just look at the basics first. What do we actually see? You can ignore everything, you know, I've kind of annotated here first, right? Let's just look at it simply. We have New York Midnight Press, which is the open of the daily candle. We then have an Asia range that we usually look at, or we can, for now, let's just call it the Asia session. Then we have the London session, and then we have the New York session. If we just come over to the next slide quickly, right? This makes it a little bit easier, clearer to see, right? These are the different sessions. You know, first we have the Asia. Asia is comprised of Sydney and Tokyo. Um, a lot of you guys probably see the session start from around 2 a.m. I believe it is for Tokyo. And that's usually what people mark as Asia range. But Asia actually starts from, you know, Sydney time because they're also in Asia. And that starts at 10 p.m. for us in the UK. Then, of course, we have our London session and the New York session, which we like to trade. So cool, let's go back. This thing here, this New York midnight price has a lot of significance, it's important. New York midnight price is the point at which the algorithm predetermines the high and the low of the day. If you haven't heard that before, the high and the low of each day is already predetermined, it's programmed in. It's already been decided at New York Midnight Price what the high and the low of the coming day will be. And that's done by the algorithm that price is delivered by. But let's break this down. For now, right? Of course, I, I tell you guys a lot of theory in my videos and, you know, sometimes it just comes out. The theory is good to know and understand. But in practicality, if it confuses you, if you're one of those people that, you know, just wants to know how to use something, then that's fine. Just you know concentrate on that you don't have to know the theory although i would you know recommend everyone learning and you know questioning it you can come to me with all your questions of course but let's break this down now asia typically is a range we consolidate and then london delivers what we call a judas swing and then new york offers us continuation this is what i'm not going to say a typical day but if we had a trading day like this, I'd be very, very happy. This is a very, very easy, you know, bullish day to trade. But, you know, unfortunately, that does not happen every day. Looking at this, right, you guys should recognize something. Accumulation, manipulation, distribution. See how it looks like a PO3, right? And one other thing I guys want, to, want you to know, I want you guys to know, sorry, is... This candle also has contraction and expansion, right? How? Of course, we open, you know, we've, we've opened that New York midnight price. Asia is a range. London typically, you guys should make notes on this, typically makes the high or the low of the day. You know, in our last episode, we spoke about the weekly candle. We say Monday or Tuesday, you know, early on in the day, we may, or early on in the week, sorry, we make the low of the week. This is quite similar. Earlier on in the day, we're making the low or the high of the day, you know, depending on our bias. Of, of course, my, my examples here are bullish. So we're talking about the low of the day being made. So when we look over our candle, right, you know, you can line up New York midnight price. This is where we open. You know, the candles will be ranging a bit. We're just, it's just a small candle at first, let's say. Then this wick is comprised of this Judas swing in London. We make the low of the day. We probably tap into some sort of imbalance. All the block, you know, any array that's down there that's relevant then we have a move away so contraction because initially we open here as we come down this candle turns bearish as in this daily candle and then we move up and we follow you know this continuation what does continuation mean you know we're continuing let's say the real move as i mentioned usually and we're heading to our draw on liquidity we're heading in you know the direction that price actually wants to head and one other thing I want you guys to realize about the PO3, you know, this specific model, even ignoring the daily candle here, 
each part of this has you know a specific purpose when we accumulate what does that actually mean you know accumulation what are we accumulating we're accumulating orders on both sides of this there are orders when we have a range like this we have stop orders on both sides so what are we doing when price is trading here first we're taking out this sell side liquidity under the asia range and what do we do in the ny we take out you know the buy side liquidity so you'll typically see people on their charts mark out the asia range usually it's like a box with a line in the middle of it and the 50 percent of the asia range also has you know a significance that we can get into in a later episode but this is what you will typically see in you know your day your intra intraday tra trading and what it is with your intraday trading it's very important like especially this episode in specific the stuff i'm teaching this is stuff i use every single day the new new york midnight price is one of the first things that I go ahead and mark up on my chart i've opened my chart i've gone a you know 5 15 minute usually and this is the first thing i will do i'll find my new york midnight price just mark a line straight through it and we're going to talk about why in a second and usually i will also mark my asia range i use a specific indicator which i'll show you guys in a second and i'm up trading usually around 9 a.m so at 9 a.m i'm not actually trading unless i see something very very valid rather i've just jumped on i want to see what asia has done has price moved above or below new york midnight and what london has done so far and what i'm expecting after london lunch london lunch is 12 uh 10 a.m to 12 um uk time and then new york of course we trade from one o'clock um or well rather you know to uh 12 o'clock for the kill zones 12 to 3 uh regarding the kill zones i don't want to get into them too much i have made a free youtube video on these so please go watch that uh first to build that foundational understanding and then come back to this video so cool of course this is taken from that youtube video this you know small section the different market sessions are based around the relative working hours and working day in different parts of the globe you know a lot of big words simply what that means is right in london what times do we work as in in the uk you know a typical nine to five right you know some people eight to four whatever that kind of trading window is when everyone is active i think we can all agree on that right so these times these boxes for each country they represent that time for that country so 1 p.m for new york is our uh sorry no our 1 p.m is new york's 9 a.m right so i hope you guys are understanding what i'm saying this box represents new york's 9 to 5 this is our you know 8 a.m to 4 p.m as i've said and this is of course asia's and of course this is a little bit longer due to the fact i mentioned to you guys you know it's sydney and tokyo combined together but usually that's not what you see on people's charts they usually just you know mark up tokyo session or well it doesn't really matter you, you know it depends on if you're using indicators or marking it yourself we recommend trading within the london and the new york session as more liquidity is present in the market if right you guys go ahead and look up traders on let's say youtube or at least experienced traders and they're day traders they're trading every single day you'll see even if they're in america their next countries they're waking up at stupid hours to trade london and new york because that is when price delivers the moves we don't want to trade consolidation that is not when you want to be trading we want to be trading these you know these real moves essentially using this you know sort of po3 model let's say you can catch one move a day with all the teachings that i'm going to give to you guys in the end you should be able to formulate at least you know given the conditions are right i don't want to you know put it like oh you're definitely going to get get a trade a day because some days are definitely not trading days and i'm going to give you the criteria for when they are and when they aren't right and most of the time you will see you know price does this obvious we have this judas swing we tap into something we move away we have a market structure shift on you know your five minute for example and now we're thinking okay cool it's time for us to you know get into this trade after the market structure shift and get in this new york continuation so yeah let's let's jump on the charts okay so this is euro usd looking a few days back right 
first thing I use this indicator FX market sessions um, if I just check from I think it's from here yeah it should say yeah so this is the one I use this first one cool so let's turn this on right what what does this do for me so essentially I'm trying to use this square to mark out this day so now this day is a bearish example right and one thing i want you guys to know is asia is not really you know a range here we don't really have this accumulation but regardless it's not or it's also not a very strong move it's not giving us a trendy move right because all asia has done is you know it's moved up but then it's also just come back to essentially where it started this retrace deep and then london's given us a judas so let's get rid of these indicators for a second and then essentially we can mark out you know this around here consolidation we manipulate and then we have our distribution right but let's put indicators back on what does ny offer it offers continuation what did i tell you guys continuing continuation is it's a move in the real direction the real you know way price wants to move for that day so and it's quite clear to see we have that initial you know asia range and then we have the london judas and then we have the new york continuation and of course once that low of the day has been made we trade back into the day as you guys can see so how do i approach each day in the market right let's bring this box over around yeah around here right because it's a 15 minute sorry this is typically when I would have come onto the charts. So now for a second, let's take this off. So I've come onto the charts and you know, this is what I've seen formed so far. And also one more thing, the reason I've picked this specific day is a much cleaner example than the recent days. I feel like the recent, you know, past week or so, even a bit longer on Euro USD hasn't been great for me to kind of show you guys what I mean by the teachings that I'm giving. But as I said, we come on the charts, we look for New York midnight price, right? It's this candle. As you guys can see at the bottom, if you go all the way to the bottom, right under where my cursor is, um, you can see the times, right? So we come over to midnight. We just put, I usually just put a line like this at the middle. So what is the use of New York midnight price, right? Typically, what we want to see is a run above or below, depending on your bias, right? So let's say my bias for today was bearish. I want to see New York midnight price and I want to see us run above it. When we run above it, typically this will happen in London. You know, we create the Judas swing. And then I want to see a market structure shift, which, you, which we would have seen here, you know, on like, let's say the five minute. And that market structure shift is where I'll get in. So if I go on my five minute, let's just, you know, check. I'm going to scroll back a little. Okay, cool. So what, what happened here, right? We ran above New York midnight price, of course. And if we just OTE this. actually wait before i even mark it where is let's just zoom in a little where's my market structure shift here everyone should be able to identify this by now okay cool let me just mark it for you guys this low gets taken so then what i would have done is ote'd from here to there we wait for delivery into the premium since we're shorting right and we could have shorted off this imbalance which i would have and it would have looked something like this and what can we target now so let's talk about targets right so now we've understood we want price to run in the run above or below new york midnight price in the opposite direction to our bias 
right? Because we're bearish, price makes a bullish run, a run above, and then we get a market structure shift. When this market structure shift is happening is very important. But when I mean the actual time of when it's happening, right? It's happening inside our kill zones. Cool. And we can turn this back on. And what can we target? This is liquidity, right? We have equal lows. We could target this low and this low. Me personally, I would have targeted Asia low. I wouldn't really like to, you know, hold beyond that. There's no, you know, there's no clear cut targets. Potentially this low here would have been a nice target as well. But I would have been very happy to, you know, catch this trade and get out. At, you know, this is about 3.3% if you risk 1%. This is a very, very, so within these teachings, I'm also giving you guys an intraday model, a model that I use on a regular basis, right? And I would have been very happy, you know, to catch this 3%. As you guys can see, just, just so it's very clear, right? Let's just take this off for a second. Of course, you ran into the premium. Why did I enter here? Before price came up, what was this candle here? An imbalance, right? Let's just move it over. So my entry would have lined up this imbalance. And of course, I know this is in hindsight and it's possible that I might have not taken this trade, but just looking at it now in hindsight, it does meet the criteria that I'm looking for. New York midnight price, we make a run above. It's happened during a kill zone. We have a market structure shift. We come to the OTE or well, we deliver to the premium and then we short. And it would have just, you know, been a very nice trade. Assuming you caught the whole move, you know, this could have been 5% very easy. Me personally, I wouldn't have held it that far. Like just being honest with you guys, I would, I would have, you know, just got out these equal lows. That would have been a nice target for me because as I showed you guys in the, you know, slideshow, price would usually deliver to the opposite side of asia we'll take one side then we'll go to the other side and you know very clearly that is what happened here and then now just looking at the remainder of the day we can see that price traded back into the range we made the low of the day and we traded back in and of course the high was made here during london and the low was made in New York, as I showed you guys earlier. Another thing we can notice is, you know, price always reaches into something. So, you know, potentially there's a low time frame order blocking this wick. Price reach. Personally, I would have thought that price would take these wicks and feel, you see this imbalance here, even though it is just a five minute imbalance. Or, you know, if we come, we can just have a quick look. Yeah, this isn't very nice. Um, as you guys can see, price had this four hour imbalance to fill. So I would have been waiting for price to fill this and then have a market structure shift. I would have had this marked previously. If you come down even. Yeah, so I would have, you know, potentially been looking at that four hour imbalance or even coming onto a daily. I'm just, I'm just, these things, they're not extremely relevant to what I'm teaching you right now, right now. But I just want you guys to kind of have that insight into the way I think when I'm trading and the thought process behind everything. So cool. Let's let's just go back now. So now uh, I seem to have lost the day. Okay. Okay, here. So now let's talk once again about taking profit, right? I've shown you guys my trade. Here's another tool, a simple teaching that we're going to use, right? Let's go back to the presentation for a second. So this teaching, right, is called ADR, average daily range. And something we use is the five ADR. The five ADR is the average movement of the last five days, right? So we're just going to use this for a second. Um, of course, I've shown you guys this here. Is This is how we calculate it. But let me show you practically how I would, you know, genuinely calculate it. And you guys can make a note of all of this and go and back test it. Okay, so back on the charts, right? I'm just going to place... Where's it gone? Straight line. So I know which day...
I was on. Now let's go to our daily chart. Trend review has been a little bit laggy. Okay, cool. So we are using this day over here, right? So how can we calculate the ADR, the average daily range for this day? We take the previous five days. So we take one, two, three, four, and five. So starting from this candle, right? What I want you guys to know is every time I hover above a candle, pay attention to this OHLC, open high, low close. So let's start with day one. The reason it's called the five ADR is because we're using the previous five days. Cool. If you place this here, right, I'll come and hover above this. We do 1.008. What is that? You know, just looking at the OHLC, because I'm hovering above our, you know, day one, you can see I'm doing the high minus the low, right? I'm just going to type in all of them and then I'll just calculate them in a second because this again combined with the new york midnight price is one of the first things i'll calculate every single day so you know it's a lot easier to mark up new new york midnight price so i'll start with that mark it up and then you know go ahead and calculate my adr for the day I mean, if you're if you're at this stage of the video, it's just a bit silent. You can just skip to once. You know, I've calculated everything, but I'm gonna do it in live time. This one never wrong. So now, usually I'll just use my phone as my calculator to go ahead and quickly do this one. Point. Oh. So this day we used 124 pips or 124.3 to be exact. You don't have to be exact, you know, most of the time I do just round the number up. You know, for the Euro USD, typically the ADR, you know, if I think if you take a large period of days, it comes to around 100 pips a day, give or take. But of course, you know, it fluctuates. We could have had news on these days or whatnot. So, you know, without looking back at Forex Factory, it's hard to say. So this day, oh yes, seventy pip range. So it's hundred. Oh, everyone should know this from school, right? How do you find the average? Just add everything together and we divide by how many there are, which is five. I'm not going to write it out. We'll just find the answer. So 
So now my answer is 110.78, right? So what does this number mean? So this is the movement of pips that I'm expecting in the day. So from the high to the low, this is the number I expect. Now we can check this. Of course, like I said, you know, kind of as a disclaimer, it will not be exact every time, but it gives you a rough idea of what you can expect from the day. Of course, it is very contextual. One point I will add, you know, on the days of news, you can usually expect more movement if you're expecting volatile news. Uh, let's just check, sorry. So on the wrong candle. So yeah, so this day moved a lot less than expected, give or take about, you know, 30, not 30, you know, oh yeah, around 33 pips less than we would, you know, would have expected from that day. I'm just going to check something. So yeah, okay, cool. So let's go back to the day. So how can we actually use this, right? Now coming back to the day we had marked up. Get rid of this line. Let's let's draw our setup again that we had. We had a short from this imbalance here. Let me zoom in a little so it's clearer for you guys. It's around here. So once we've had this market structure shift in London, right, we're fairly confident that this is the high of the day being made here. You know, of course, it, it could have been the low of the day first if it was on the other side. But over here, we can be pretty confident that this is the high of today and we're not really going to move past this. You know, let's just say we're not expecting any news, no drivers for price that's going to push us higher than this. So cool. We've had this market structure shift and now we've got in our trade, right? And we're setting out take profit. How can we use the ADR? If this is the high of the day, 1.02, you know, 104, what you can do to this is add 110 pips, right? So let's add 110 pips. Oh, whoa. In this case, we're going to minus since we're shorting. I've been caught out like that before, so you have to be careful. We're going to minus 110 pips because we're expecting that movement downwards if this is the high of the day. So we would have expected, you know, considering the ADR, the law of the day to be made around, around here, 1.01 .01, roughly. So the ADR isn't a tool that we use blindly, right? Once I've calculated that, you know, this is where I expect the law of my day and I'm in a trade, I want to see if this lines up with anything. Right? Does it make sense for me to take a profit here? Me personally, right? When we set take profits, we set take profits at points of liquidity, liquidity pools. That is the reason that I'm targeting, you know, the bottom of the Asia range. So would I have set my take profit here? Again, I told you guys I would have been pretty happy setting it at the bottom of Asia. Sometimes I will leave a runner. In this case, I will I would have left a runner and I would I would have expected us to, you know, make a move down here, maybe not all the way. And realistically, I would have aimed for this low. And of course, this low as well, because, you know, this low is just, as you can see, slightly below our Asia lows. This would have been a good, you know, safe target, for example, and then potentially this low, this one over here next, this one, and of course, this one that did not get reached. Even this one didn't, you know, get reached by price. And this one, 
this sharp blow here did. So what I'm showing you with that, when we set our take profits, let's, you know, we don't need to juice the market every day. We can take the 3% here and be very happy and done with that. 3% in one day is an achievement. Even 3% in a week is very, very good. 3% in a week, if you do that every week, 12% in a month, if you have a 600k funded, you know, 6k times 12, this is assuming you're risking 1%, 6k times 12, you, can, you guys can do the maths, you know, something like 84k, prop firm takes their cut, you can still be left with something like 70k. If I've done 3% on a day, you know, you can be out of the market for the week and be like, you know, you, you're done, hands off now. You, you check the charts, but you're not actively trading because why? You want to protect the money that you've made. If you guys go and look at the stats of prop firms, not a lot of people make it to, I think, something dumb like, well, first of all, a lot of people didn't even make it to the first payout. But even past that, there's only a small number of people with accounts that have been running past the SIF payout. So, yeah, that will be some interesting research you can do. So, let's do a small recap now. We've talked about the New York midnight price and how we want to see runs above or, you know, below it according to our bias if this is bearish we see the run above if it's a bullish day we see the run below i'm gonna head back to my presentation quickly of course on the charts we had you know a bearish example here's a bullish example new york midnight price you know we don't really go below it london comes we head below it and then we have the move up so this is just showing you guys you know in the opposite direction aside from that of course as we saw on the charts each session has you know that kind of role to fill a job to do and of course london has its manipulation and new york will offer that continuation usually one last thing that i would like to touch on is framing the day with news if there's news coming up on a specific day right you might find the price action you know let's say to be weird well usually what happens if the news at is at one which is very common so one one thirty uh uk time you know we get a lot of consolidation beforehand we don't really see anything fruitful price won't really give you you know a nice move beforehand sometimes it might it may set up for the news which you will see and that's why it's very important like i told you guys when i come on the charts at you know 9 a.m 9 30 whatever i jump on and the first step is you know mark the new York midnight calculate my adr and then observe what has asia done did Asia form a range? Has London given us that Judas swing yet? Are we in the Judas swing? You know, so for all these sort of questions, they're kind of like questions I ask myself and the way I analyze the charts. So these things I've given here, right? This was included in the last presentation. News accelerates price action towards prices objectives. Prices objectives are higher time from a raise. By higher time frame, I'm typically looking at, you know, the four hour and above. So what this means is, you know, around news, we can is very common like you guys can go test this yourself go check red folder news pick a pair if that pair is affected by it go back look pure free we see some sort of consolidation we see a manipulative move in the you know the wrong direction when i say wrong it's you know it's in like apostrophes and then we see a move in the real direction that price wants to head in what is the real direction the real direction is where price is drawing to on the higher time frame it's going to be in line with our bias usually for the day and what you'll see or what i will do and you're going to see me do it in the future if you haven't already when there's news we mark the higher time frame arrays around price i'll mark my four hour imbalances all the blocks uh points of liquidity that could be swept because as i said here you know the pl3 how we sweep both sides of liquidity that is what i want to see around news we will usually sweep liquidity and make a move in you know the opposing direction is very common these things everything i've taught in this episode today I don't want you guys to just take my word for it. I don't want you to jump on the charts tomorrow and be like, okay, you know, I'm waiting for Asia to be arranged, then London, Judas, and then New York. I want you to go and look at the charts yourself because it's not like that every day, but you will get those clean examples. And what I've learned being a trader for, you know, a while now, being a good trader means waiting for those days when everything is clear, when the setups present themselves rather than you chasing them. If if you ever jump on the charts and you're not sure what Asia's done, of course you can see it, but you know you're like, oh, is that really a range? London's then giving you a Judas thing, but you're like, oh, is that really a Judas? It's not a very strong move. If you're unsure, you don't need to trade. 
and the more you back this and the more you stay on charts the more you'll start to understand the days that are worth trading because not every day is a trading day as i said before but that's all i leave you guys with for now I'll be back with another episode on Tuesday and we can get deeper into some of the intraday stuff. If you have any questions in the meantime, just hit me up and I'll be happy to help.